Welcome back. So if you remember last time, uh, Jeff and Devin had created these um, little foot pads there inside the cabin and now they're in the process of filling those with some expanding foam. And I've been moving along and getting some more stuff done with uh, the plumbing for the oil feed for the new um, redrive. So this is the line there coming from the main oil feed of the engine and that's going to the redrive and you see I've got the redrive sort of just temporarily bolted in there without the shaft. Um, included and that line is gonna pretty much live there it's not permanently done yet but that's basically how it's gonna live and then the other side is the high pressure feed coming from the governor that um, runs to the prop and you see I've also just kept this pressure gauge in here that um, will give us a pressure reading up to 300 and I've positioned the gauge there so I can read it from in front of the wing because uh, when we actually go to run run this uh, later on I want to be able to see if the governor is working correctly and then that other feed comes from the other side. And meanwhile uh, Devin got these um, brackets all sorted out here so he could pr um, paint them because you saw last time they were bonded into place and so he just primed them and uh, initially you can see he just got the primer on there and then was going to spray them um, with some black gloss just so they uh, are not going to rust or anything like that. And here Jeff's got the first of those aileron spades sort of uh, closed out again there on that first aileron that was done a little while ago. So he's created that patch there and it's just been bonded into place and just a little bit of weight sitting on there to hold it down while it uh, sets up. And the other one still needs to be cut out uh, around the spade uh, base. And over on the winglets, Jeff has created a new access panel there because we had moved uh, the way the linkage was working there for the rudders and this wasn't in the original design but anyway he's done those and the, there are uh, little doors there with um, four little nut plates in the corner there so you can actually screw the uh, cover panel on there and hold it into place so he's got those sort of bedded in there uh, nicely and if you've been following closely you'll know that we're using electrically operated governor so this is the wiring for that and I'm just in the process there of putting uh, the little pins on there and uh, getting those put into the little miniature connector that comes with it and plugs on there onto the back of the uh, governor. And it's a bit of a pain to do this because it's just really finicky little work and the, um, the connector is miniature and all the connections or the pins you know sit really close together. But anyway, I've done it before when I did it for the test stand so I knew what I was up for. So anyway, I got that pretty much sorted out. And uh, here you can see Devin's got those brackets now um, sprayed in um, gloss black. So that's the first one. And the other one over there has also been done. So just waiting for that to uh, dry up. And this is what that connector looks like with the five pins sort of halfway pushed in there. And you can see the size there based upon the end of my fingertip there. So uh, it's kind of uh, small and awkward to deal with and you've got to push all those little pins in at the same time uh, otherwise everything gets a little bit out of whack with the wires and they've got to go all the way in uh, to the end and click into place before it's uh, a good connection there so this is what it looks like when it's all together and uh, just the last thing to do there is just um, put the, uh, the back shell on there and just screw that into place so I got that done and uh, and that's the back shell just there so just I was gonna uh, shrink that heat shrink on there and put the back shell on that's what it looks like with that on and the last thing to do is um, is actually just connect it up to the governor And hopefully you can see in there that it's actually hooked up to the governor now so that's another job done checked off my list of things to do in the engine compartment and while I was waiting for the new journal bearings to show up for the redrive I started working on the wiring uh, for the wings and so I had Devin here helping me uh, just feed through those wires for these accelerometers they're gonna, gonna be in the wing tips and then I got on to uh, soldering uh, those into place
and that's the left uh, wingtip accelerometer right there that's set up to measure um, accelerations in all three different axes. So I've got three different wires on there, plus a power and a ground, and that'll be showing up on the little uh, data capture unit that we have. And uh, this is what it looks like, sort of close up there, so that you can see my little handiwork for soldering, and we'll just be basically bonding that into place on the inside of the spar, which you'll see in a little bit. If you look carefully on there, you can actually see it shows the different axes uh, on there, X, Y, and Z. Z is sort of coming out perpendicular to the actual circuit board. And you've got power and ground going in there, and then X, Y, and Z wire. And as I said, they feed back into the cabin onto the data capture unit. And yet another of the changes that we had to do was uh, moving back the leading edges on the intake scoop to allow a place for uh, the parachute strap to sort of deploy from one side of the um, intake to the other. So that's what Jeff's done here. Cut those back and now he's just basically filling there where he did that. And uh, Devin's in the process here of um, cleaning out or sort of cut, cutting open and also uh, just, you know, trimming out the access panel there in the uh, outboard edge of the strake. And this is the one that's being used to um, access uh, not only the flight controls there, but also to, for bolting the wing on. And here I got the accelerometer done for the wing tip uh, for the right hand wing there, as you can see, and that just needs to be bonded into place. And up at the top here, I've got like a larger um, set of wires there, like a nine strand, um, where I've hooked that into, and then the other uh, wires hooking into that will be for the strain gauges. And moving on, uh, this is um, a little um, manifold that we've got that we're going to be running the air in for the pitot, and it goes to this pressure switch, and we're going to be using this so it will activate um, power to the gear switch. So this is how we stop the gear from accidentally being retracted when it's on the ground, because we don't really have the luxury of a squat switch. So the gear won't work until you're actually flying and doing probably 60 or 70 knots. And that's just for the gear up operation. The gear down will always be active. And something else I was working on uh, the other evening was uh, adding these uh, straight fences. So we've got the winglet fence at the end of the wing, um, which you know prevents any spanwise flow around that curvature between the wing and the winglet. And so what we're doing now is we're adding um, a similar sort of thing here, but this is more like really a Vortilon although it sticks out enough that it will uh, prevent any spanwise flow happening. So that will improve um, the uh, effectiveness of the wing here um, in that, you know, any spanwise flow because of the angle of the strake um, will be prevented from sort of continuing on uh, outboard onto the other part of the wing. So um, that, that should improve things. But the other reason I wanted to do this is a, just a, a really easy solution for tie down. So just put a hole in here and you'll just be able to put like a carabiner on there when you're ready and uh, there's your tie down there so it doesn't have to retract it's just a really simple design nothing can go wrong with it it's not moving or anything like that and this will just be made out of uh, one eighth of an inch aluminum and uh, be bolted onto the outside edge of the strake and we already have a gap there so uh, yeah we'll be right back after this little break And now we're on to Friday and I'm working on the wing still, uh, doing the wiring. So right now I've um, got the task of putting the connectors on here for the nav and strobe lights. And these are the ones, um, you know, so you can remove the wings. We have a connector on the wings there and then there'll be a corresponding one uh, in the strake. So when you bolt the wings on, you just put these two connectors together and then you've got um, the power uh, running out to the strobe and nav lights out on the wing tip. And we're using these weatherproof DTM connectors, which are sort of like an automotive connector and easy to use. Uh, this particular one is a four pin one. So what we have there is uh, power. And then we have uh, one wire for the strobes and one wire for the nav. And then there's also a sync wire which runs between the left and right wings to make sure that the strobes uh, stay in sync. And that's how these particular uh, LED lights that I have got uh, work. And back to the parachute strap. So here um, we've got the actual straps put in through those brackets there with the a half inch hardware. And you can see it, we've basically looped a shorter strap around there and then we've uh, got the longer strap sort of looped through the two ends of that. And this is kind of how uh, they recommend, how Galaxy recommends to make uh, linkages like that. And then I'm standing up on the roof of the aircraft there with all four straps 
just to show where they all pull together and then uh, from there there'll be a carabiner on there which I'm actually holding in my hand and there's another strap there which hooks to the actual parachute so it's uh, right on the center of gravity and it should work out fine. And I did mention last time I was going to show you how these uh, thrust washers are working. So there they are in the front there, that's with a little notch in them. I've just got my finger on there. And you'll see there's a little hole there and that's where uh, the oil feed sort of comes out. So it not only feeds the journal bearings, it also run, runs out onto those little notches on the thrust washers to make sure that they uh, stay nicely uh, lubricated. So that's how that all works. And moving over to the oil seal around the shaft so as you can see in the middle of the seal there there's kind of like this acrylic um, ring there which puts pressure against uh, the housing from the outside of the oil ring uh, so it doesn't leak on the outside and then there's this little uh, spring around the inside there which keeps pressure on the actual uh, shaft so that doesn't leak so that's basically how that works just a rubber seal a spring and a little acrylic uh, ring to keep everything uh, nicely sealed and back over to the wings, another thing for our telemetry is an accelerometer in the rudder. Um, so it's going to pick up any flutter happening in the rudder. And this is just one that just picks up that motion there, sort of in and out motion. And uh, as you can see, that wires up into that main harness again, which will be going back to the data capture unit. And uh, here's Devin working on uh, cutting out a little notch there in uh, the fuselage skin there at the engine compartment to allow the parachute strap a place. Um, to sort of deploy and that's going to be covered with a little um, breakaway cover uh, later on. And this is the lower engine cowling and Devin already cut out this opening here for uh, the vent which allows air to escape uh, you know, from the engine compartment. And Jeff's just doing a little bit of extra trim work around there because there's a door in there uh, which you'll see in a minute that basically slots into place. And we're going to have uh, you know some hinges on there and a little actuator so you can open and close that. So it's like a reverse cowling thing um, to allow air to uh, escape from the engine compartment if it's getting uh, too warm. So that's kind of how it sits there nice and flush. And uh, when it needs to open, um, it'll just have, pro I think we're just gonna use a, a linear actuator on there and it'll just pull out the way just trying to do that. Obviously it still needs a little bit of fitment work in there. We just did it um, earlier on from that. Um, Anyway, so that, those little uh, flaps on the side there hold it from pulling all the way open. And uh, this way, uh, extra heat can escape. Well, of course, there's also going to be, a, I think it's a one inch um, gap between the cowling and the spinner to allow air to escape from there as well. So we won't have to worry too much about cooling the engine, I don't believe, with water cooling and uh, lots of uh, room for air to exit the engine compartment. But you'll see uh, more on that here shortly as um, they work on the fitment. And Jeff's getting ready to close out this aileron, so he needed me to hook up the uh, connector here for the aileron trim motor. So again, another one of these little DTM connectors. And right now I'm just hooking up the power for it, and there's a three other wires for the position, but I'm not doing those just yet. But I am leaving um, the wires there and also running a feed, so if we need to hook those up for some reason later, we will. Uh, anyway, that's the connector on there. And uh, here's our door again for this inlet. So, um, Devin sort of trimmed that off a little bit more because it was just sort of rough trimmed earlier. And here you can see he's just doing the final uh, sanding work around the edge there just to make the uh, edge cooperate nicely with that door. And then I think what we're going to do is uh, use some of the carbon fiber hinge that we still have from before and use that to uh, hinge it at the front. And with that trimming done, it's fitting really nicely now. So. Um, Again, the next thing will be to just bond some hinges on either side there, uh, just using those carbon ones so you don't actually see any fasteners on the outside. And then, as I said, probably just a linear actuator uh, for opening and closing it. I think that's what we were going to do. And I've already got provision in there for um, that. And I can probably even hook it up to the ECU and have the ECU control opening and that based upon temperature. Uh, once I get everything else sorted out that I need to do, knocked off my list of a bazillion things that are left. And more on the telemetry, this is an accelerometer here in uh, the aileron. And this is again to detect any sort of flutter up or down motion uh, in the aileron when we're flying. So it's just bonded onto the inside skin there, just monitoring the single axis, the up and down axis there. With a the connector, so we can, um, you know, connect it in when we um, 
put the aileron in place. And these are the winglets again with those little access panels. And as you can see, um, Devin and Jeff cut out the access panel for each of those. And um, it's basically got them fit. And you, as you can see, he's also done some work on the leading edge there of the intake scoop after we sort of moved that back a little bit. And Devin's just doing some sort of final sanding just around the edges here of this uh, uh, access panel on that other winglet just to get that one sorted out. And I've been doing more on the wiring, so now I've got uh, not only the strobe, uh, nav strobe connected, but I also have the one there for the aileron trim. And uh, that's sort of been carried through the wing there and it makes its way out to the other side over here. And I've got to put the connectors on there. And actually by the end of the day, I did get both of those connectors put on there, one for the trim and one for the accelerometer. And uh, Devin was doing a little bit of final uh, trim work on this uh, door panel because uh, we'd rough trimmed that before and then uh, needed to actually trim around where the locks are. So he's just got that done and I'll have to do some final fitment on that just to make sure it sits nicely. And uh, Jeff got these accelerometers there bonded into place inside the spa. And again, these are just for the prototype, you know, so we can monitor things and just make sure we don't have mainly uh, any flutter issues or any uh, unnatural sort of strain that you'll see uh, next week we'll be putting the strain gauges in place. So you'll see those, but anyway, that's the two accelerometers there in the winglets all bonded in. And finally, the journal bearings for the redrive showed up, but I didn't have time to work on that um, on Friday. But anyway, the other thing that showed up was the last of the fittings that I needed for the oil return um, for the redrive. So this is the one coming there out of the bottom of the redrive. And then underneath here, you can see where everything sort of keys back into the sump. And so previously, it was just the governor feeding back in and also this one here from turbo number two, the oil drain from there. And that's sort of just a trickle that comes out of there, but they want you to have an AN10 line, which is what I have. And uh, so what's going to happen here is I have to put in like another Y in here. Uh, because I need to include uh, the drain from the uh, redrive. So I've got this other Y here. So I'm going to make a little extension on there um, to the other Y. And then uh, coming out of there, you'll have one side of this with a 90, uh, that one there. That will run over to the drain there from the redrive, as you can see there, the one that, that uh, 45 connector coming out of there. And so that'll, that's how that'll drain and return back to the sump. And then the other side of the Y there, you know, where my thumb is, that'll be where we're hooking up the return there coming back from the uh, governor because that you know, has its oil feed in it as well. So we can uh, supply the high pressure feed over to uh, the redrive. And that's our update for this week. And the next update won't be until next Saturday um, because of the holiday. I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. And uh, if you like this video, leave a comment. And thanks again for watching.